from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. Well, good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, he's in a great position to serve those who have served us. We're going to tell you how one Nevada U.S. Congressman is in a prime position to help Nevada's and this nation's veterans, and he is my guest today, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. Thanks for being here again today. Thanks for the invite, Marilee. Well, it's a body whose work has great bearing on legislation affecting the approximately 340,000 veterans who call Nevada home. It is the House Veterans Affairs Committee, and today on Ion Washington, we'll tell you why you should care that Nevada's newest congressman has been assigned to Veterans Affairs. We'll tell you the jurisdiction of the committee, and we'll talk about recent federal news most important to those who've served this nation. After Congressman Abade was sworn into office in September, he anxiously awaited news of his committee assignments, which came a few weeks later. You know, a senator or a member's committee assignments matter a ton to the folks back home. You want them on the committees whose jurisdictions matter most to your state. Well, big salute to Nevada. Our Congressman Amade has been assigned to three committees, the House Natural Resources Committee, the House Judiciary Committee, and to the House Veteran Affairs Committee, which is our topic today. When a committee lists its first of the many jurisdictional areas, quote, veterans measures generally, well, that means that everything from veterans' pensions to veterans' medical care to oversight of the Department of Veterans Affairs is partly in the hands of my guest. And that matters a lot when your state is home to so many veterans. According to the Nevada Office of Veteran Services, more than 340,000 uh, veterans live in Nevada. And that's a lot of folks, Congressman, looking to you to advocate on their behalf on the Hill. Big segment of Nevada's population, Marilee. You're absolutely correct. Now, what did you start telling us uh, when we were in break? You mentioned something about your daughter? Yeah, my daughter uh, actually uh, spent four years on active duty in the Navy as an officer, deployed to the Gulf twice. Very proud of her. Uh, and so her experiences and, uh, and living through that as a parent as well as my own serving on active duty sure. in the 80s are things that I think are, are good ways to... Uh, bring those to the committee to help Nevada's veterans. And maybe it makes you think you've got some special experience here when it comes to meeting those needs. Well, you know what, it gives you, hopefully it gives you a perspective where you know the, uh, some of the uh, ground that they've traveled. You know, during the campaign, you had your fingers crossed for three committees. You got all three of them. Uh, we're going to save uh, judiciary matters and natural resources for another show. But uh, how big of a deal is it, in your view, that Nevada has a congressman that sits on the Veterans Affairs Committee? You know, Marilee, when you look at the communities around the state and the, and the veterans' population throughout all of those, um, th they are part of the fabric of all of our communities. So being in a position of primary jurisdiction over their issues is, I think, one that lends itself well to doing the job of public service for those folks. And, and, and speaking of jurisdiction, we're, we're going to get into the uh, the jurisdiction of the committee in, in our next segment. But, you know, I thought it might have been news to our Ion, uh, Ion Washington audience that, that the committee has oversight responsibility for the entire Department of Veterans Affairs. It's. Um, you, you kind of look over the department's shoulders. You're checking up on uh, compliance on a wide range of issues, for instance, like timely benefits being one of so many. Yep, medical care, uh, prescription care, uh, oversight on, on budget functions, all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to being in the hospital in Reno, the home in Boulder City, sure. cemeteries, you name it. It's kind of, um, you, your, your committee examines uh, a lot of things that the department is is uh, is doing, for instance, you said the effectiveness, you know, providing those benefits we mentioned, the quality of health care and, and uh, compliance with statutory uh, provisions. And one of the big things is efficient use of resources, isn't it? Yep, yep. It's to make sure that you, for the resources that you get, that our folks get the biggest bang for their buck and they're, and they're used to provide the best possible level of benefits uh, as a result of their service. You know, um, again, hundreds of thousands of veterans are kind of in your hands here on this committee uh, and coming up with uh, legislative uh, ideas, policies, et cetera. And you know, you, you did mention during the campaign that there are some Nevada issues 
where partisanship has no place. And of course, veterans is one of them. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that there's a Republican versus Democrat thing. I'm looking forward to integrating with the folks on the committee on both sides of the aisle, many states with large populations themselves, and and making sure that we, uh, especially with, the, with as a result of the Gulf War uh, stuff, we have a whole new influx of folks. It's a good time to be there. We're going to get again into the jurisdiction. We're going to focus on that in our next segment. So I'd like you to have a, a moment to focus now. What, what in your view, are the just the top couple of, of needs of, uh, facing Nevada's veterans today? Well, you know, a lot of them revolve around uh, uh, medical care, health care, those issues in terms of when you access the system, whether it's prescriptions, whether it's a hospitalization, whether it's something in between. A lot of folks rely upon that system sure. as their primary provider, so, you, so you're trying to make sure that you provide a system that is of value to those folks who rely on it. And on the committee, um, uh, how much do you think you personally can do? To, you, to help out those. You know what, what I'm concentrating on right now is the subcommittee assignments because sure. there will be a few of those and so I'm going to try to make those as strategic as possible for what we're doing in Nevada. Okay. When we come back, let's find out about the jurisdiction of the House Veterans Affairs Committee right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Brought to you by the National Mining Association. The Freest Companies. Caesars Entertainment, NV Energy, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, Western Lithium Corporation, and Skyline Restaurant and Casino. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at NMA.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. technology make our lives better. Will geothermal, wind, and solar energy be a bigger part of our future? Yes. And soon it will all be in our backyard. Learn more at nvenergy.com. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the Veterans Affairs Committee and why it matters to Nevada that my guest serves on it. We've been visiting with him, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. Well, let's share now the jurisdiction and a bit of the history of the House Veterans Affairs Committee. The committee was authorized in 1946 during the 79th Congress. Its role, according to the committee's website, is to be, quote, the voice of Congress for veterans in dealing with the VA. The jurisdiction includes eight areas, veterans measures generally, cemeteries in which veterans may be buried, their compensation, education, and vocational rehabilitation, life insurance issued by the government for service in the armed forces, pensions of all wars, veterans hospitals and medical care, civil relief for service members, and readjustment of service members to civil life. That is quite a list, Congressman, and one that affects a lot of Nevadans. 
Yes, Marilee, you've done uh, you've done your homework quite well, <laughs> and it is quite a list. You feel like you're going to be awfully busy on that committee. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's plenty to keep an eye out on, especially during this pretty active time for veterans. You know, uh, it, it really is a wide range of things, and uh, in in this lousy economy, I found it interesting that you're involved in matter, uh, matters related to veterans' vocational rehabilitation. Uh, Folks needs jobs, and anything that improves uh, uh, that person's vocational skills, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yep, it sure is. Um, and what about readjustment of service members to civil life? You know, we've, we've done a few shows here on Eye on Washington on mental health, and yep. with the increase in the number of wars, the number of deployments, um, uh, give us some of your thoughts on, on this and well, you, you know, what it, you can do to help here. Anytime you talk about a family setting, then there that provides plenty of challenges in terms of deployment, coming back from deployment, financial matters, emotional matters, marital matters, you know, kids involved, sure. all those sorts of things. It's a complex set of issues. And as part of the job which requires people to be separated from their family, I think we need to have a good, strong system sure. for dealing with those those consequences and those impacts. And you know, specifically uh, mental health needs yep. uh, of veterans. You know, uh, some studies came out a couple years ago uh, showing large numbers of troops at, at, at risk for PTSD, substance abuse, suicides, and so it seems to me that as you're saying that this readjustment it includes a lot of areas. It's vocational, it's mental, it's housing, and it's other areas of help, isn't it? Yep, and when you talk about the extent to which we've been deployed overseas for the last 10, 15 years especially, and the impacts of that and how it has just basically continued to ramp along, you have a large area of responsibility in terms of providing those benefits uh, to a, a ever increasing number of folks. You know, when you when you travel home to the district, I, I know that um, uh, you do meet with some veterans. What what are what are some of the the needs you've heard from Nevada's veteran community? What what do they hope you're going to do out here? You know what? It, it's it's it all kind of centers around the idea of service. And, and and remember, now these are all volunteers at yeah. this point in time. It, we're, we're past the draft quite a ways. So these are people who chose to serve their country, go into harm's way, uh, have done so admirably. And so when you come back, when we have the experience to, to look back on how not to do it, how our Vietnam sure. folks came home, it's a big responsibility in terms of saying thanks, we understand your issues, and we're going to respond to them. When you got the news of this big committee assignment, what were some of the reactions of, uh, of your veterans' friends and the, the veterans' community in general in Nevada? You know, they, they were excited just because now they've got somebody who they can, uh, you know, who they can talk to directly to go, okay, now we had talked about these issues, you're on the primary jurisdiction committee, let's go to work. And so I'm looking forward to working with them, their counterparts in other states, and, and see if we can't, you know, chop okay. some of the wood in front of us and make it a better thing for all of them. Okay, when we come back, why don't we talk about some uh, big issues important to veterans and some uh, recent veterans-related legislation that affects okay. Nevadans. When that's going to be right after this. Every day, thousands of people in northern Nevada don't get enough to eat. One out of five children in northern Nevada go to bed hungry every night but you can do something about it. Catholic Community Services of Northern Nevada has been providing help and creating hope in our community for more than 65 years. By donating food, time, or money, you can make a difference in a hungry person's life. When you make your generous donation to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, you're helping to fight the scourge of hunger in Northern Nevada. In these tough economic times, now more than ever, we need to help those less fortunate. To find out how you can donate to St. Vincent's Dining Room in St. Vincent's Food Pantry, call, click, or stop by. And together, we can end hunger in Northern Nevada. To an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. 
you already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip. That's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias. Safe. Reliable. Simply the best. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the needs of Nevadans' veterans population and what my guest uh, says uh, his committee gives him some say in how to meet those needs of those veterans. My guest today is Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amadei. With so many veterans calling Nevada home, there's a good chance that a lot of you watching or listening to Ion Washington today care a lot about veterans-related legislation. So let's take a look now at some of the veterans-related efforts our delegation members have participated in or supported over the past few years. And then let's learn what my guest thinks are the top veterans' issues right now. Here are just some of the recent legislative efforts supported by our delegation. Expansion of burial benefits for, Nevada's, uh, for America's veterans, rent vouchers to help veterans in needs of permanent housing, housing assistance for homeless vets, job training for homeless veterans, funds for the expansion of veterans cemeteries, guidance on how to obtain benefits under the 2009 post 9-11 GI Bill, development of community-based outpatient clinics, support for wounded warriors, mental health help for veterans, and dozens more uh, funding and other uh, assistance related efforts. And possibly the most exciting current veterans news is that uh, the soon to open VA medical complex we've talked about so many times here on Ion Washington. The North Las Vegas complex reportedly is on schedule and should begin accepting patients next year. The $650 million facility is needed by Southern Nevada veterans who have had to travel to Southern California to get the type of care that will be offered at the hospital, outpatient clinic, and long-term care center. Now, if you're a Nevada veteran and you have a need that you need met, you can contact my guest, Congressman Amade at amade.house.gov. There you will find veterans-related information and also addresses and phone numbers for his D.C. and Nevada offices. You can also contact the Nevada Office of Veterans Veterans Affairs at 866-630-8387 and be directed to one of the eight office closest to you. And, you know, since we're sharing so much veterans information today, I wanted to be sure to give our uh, viewers and listeners that direct link to your office. Um, so you might be getting a lot of calls and emails soon from veterans. Thank you. But, for that. you know, if a veteran does have a specific need, they can reach you here. They can reach you in Nevada. And I think that's real important to you, yep. isn't it? Yep. And, and also to realize that, that one of the things we're doing is making sure that we're coordinating all the potential providers there. I, I was out at the base at Fallon recently for people in northern Nevada and, and was talking with the base commander there. They have some resources there that, that, that uh, are available in, in some veterans' context. So it's not just the VA. Some of the active duty installations also can potentially be a resource in certain Excellent. circumstances. You know, um, uh, our audience... Um of course, they know you. They see your face. But you, what, what's interesting and, and, and exciting too to know is that you have a, a you, know, you have a good staff, a good sized staff, um, and the offices have specialists in areas. You will have a specialist on water, a, a specialist on Yucca Mountain, a specialist here and there. 
And you uh, generally have someone who's who's very well versed, uh, including yourself, of course, but someone on staff who's very well versed in veterans' issues. So yep. you've really got that backup as well, don't you? And and someone, if you're not available, someone that someone can always get through to you on your office who knows veterans' issues. Yep, and we'll have a very strong presence in terms of the uh, of the district office headquartered in Reno in terms of having folks who know what's available on the ground in Nevada and how to how to matriculate that maze and, and, sure. and negotiate that. And I do want to emphasize again, uh, you know, at any time, go to amade.house.gov and you can go to the, the, the veterans page there and, and also find the phone numbers and addresses to all your offices. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I do want to take a moment to let you update us on that, that uh, the VA Medical Center. We, we've covered it several times here on the show, and it, it is getting close to opening and helping so many veterans who's had to travel to San Diego and Long Beach for the type of care they're going to get in that facility. Isn't that right? Yep. So it's uh, it, it'll be a great new asset for Nevada, for veterans, uh, and, and as, if you, as you've mentioned, makes the whole logistical scene of accessing care uh, much easier than it used to be. You know, we are going to close out the segment and hit our mailbag segment next, but I do want to just give you one more chance. Just what, what are some of those top needs of veterans and some of the top priorities you'll have for them here on the Hill? Well, I think being, first of all, providing an organized customer service segment, if you will, in terms of what's your problem? Is it a Nevada problem? Is it a D.C. problem? So to provide that baseline of customer service, I think, is very important. The second one is is to make sure that we recognize what we've got coming in the pipeline as a result of winding down potential deployments in, in the Middle East and so that we're prepared for that uh, on a national level to receive those folks home whether they're wounded, whether they need help with housing, uh, mental health issues, uh, regular health issues, all that. You've got a large group of folks that are going to be coming in and eligible and you need to be ready for that instead of reactive hopefully. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again on that committee. Thank you. I do want to say again that when you're with us next time, or, or one, of, one of the next times, we'll be looking at your other big committees, the Judiciary and the Natural Resources Committee, and congratulations on all three. Great. Look you forward had, to You it. had a wish list for three, and you got all three. I, I will be fully employed. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to have our mailbag segment. It's right after this. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at NMA.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Built on a fleet of just five cabs bought in 1966 by founder Charlie Frias, Frias Transportation is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Today, Frias has a fleet of nearly 1,000 vehicles and more than 2,000 employees. As an industry and community leader, Frias continues to create the future of transportation technology and management and actively supports the community. Continuing the legacy of quality service in the Las Vegas Valley. Simply the best. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association.
Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. And we are back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. It is our mailbag segment. And in this segment, we tell you about an issue the congressional page of the Joyce Communications website has been getting a lot of correspondence about. We read one of your letters on the air, and then we invite our guests to respond to you right here. And again, Congressman, we're going to give you a letter from our general mailbags. Those are the letters we get addressed to the whole delegation. Right. Some are starting to come in just for you, though, so okay. be ready next time. All right. You know, this one's on the economy. We get a lot on the economy, of course. Uh, it, this one's from Jamie H. of Carson City, and uh, Jamie writes, Dear Nevada Congressman, Nevada's economy and the housing market continue to struggle significantly. Do you feel there's any merit to the idea of allowing some sort of repository at Yucca Mountain? to open to bolster the state's economy by generating jobs faster than other industries are able to grow? Great what question. Do you say? What do you say? You, you know what, I, th I think it's part of the mix. What I've said during the campaign and continue to say is, nobody wants a nuclear landfill at Yucca Mountain, but there are opportunities in terms of uh, R&D for, uh, for reprocessing. The French are doing reprocessing right now of nuclear material. It's not commercially viable, so we need to do some more work to get it to the point where it is commercially viable, that, that could be a good, a good mission for this. Nuclear safety, nuclear best practices. You know, this last summer we had forest fire in New Mexico uh, that threatens uh, some, so the storage of some material. You've got the issue with the tsunami in Japan. There are lessons to be learned from that. Why couldn't that site sure. be used as a nuclear best practices center, R&D, those sorts of things. So I've said that I support something like that other than simply I think it's a missed uh, leadership opportunity to simply try to zero the side out and do nothing there. Interesting. You know, um, when we saw that letter from Jamie, uh, we rarely get a letter that even allows us to discuss the idea of, uh, you know, the, the the repository in yep. general. So um, yep. it, it's 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 a it's a good question. It's a, it is an excellent question. It gave you a chance to you know give a, a different view on that. Um, you know, you can send a letter to one of Nevada's senators or House members. You can go to our website at JoyceCommunications.com and check out more federal issues that impact Nevada while you're there. And Congressman, I want to thank you so much for being here today again on Ion Washington. Thanks for letting Looking me come. Looking forward to having you on again. That does wrap up this week's Ion Washington. Thanks for joining us today. I'm here Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a great day.